Well, turns out Crow's not out day drinking. Hey everyone, welcome to Cold Steel! I'm Slim Matheson last time! Well, we found out that there's some interesting things going on. And also Crow's missing. You should probably find him. We also found Milliam. She was kind of skipping class, but let's go and find out what Chancellor's speech is all about. Oh, it's you. Patrick, what are you doing here? I thought you would have gone back home. Well, we don't have any classes today, so it's just resting in my room. Sure, I've been told to return home, repeatedly at this point. But as a member of the Four Great Houses, what dignity would I have were on tail and run at a time like this? Don't underestimate me, Schwarzer. Oh, wow. Wouldn't dream of it. Is Class 1 planning on listening to the National Address, too? We are. Personally, I can't stand the man, but are in the middle of a national crisis. Those of us who elected to remain at the Academy are having a radio set up to hear the broad together. Ah, uh, right. You've got some strange classmates, though. Especially its second year. I know Heimdall's not all that far from Trista, but I'm not sure why he'd bother going to hear a speech in person. What are you talking about? That crow fellow. I met him outside the station this morning. Ah, oh, really? Oh, he didn't tell you? When I inquired, he said he wanted to hear the Chancellor's speech in person. Huh. I wouldn't have expected him to suddenly take an interest in politics. Well, at least we know we're in it now. Hmm. I haven't a clue what you're babbling on about. Anyway, it's almost noon now. Shouldn't you be running along? You'll miss the broadcast. Oh, yeah, you're right. Let's get going, Milliam. Everyone else is waiting in the classroom. Okay. The clock's about to strike noon in Heimdall, with the Chancellor set to take the stage for his national address. With the situation in Crossbell and the destruction of Gorelia Fortress still fresh in the national consciousness, the message he has today will undoubtedly shape the future of Erebonia and with it, our lives. Our reporter is joining us now, live from Dreykel's Plaza. Sounds like he's about to start. <laughs> I hate this. I've got butterflies in my stomach. This is Misty, coming to you live from Heimdall. Huh? Why is Misty... Oh, it's the host from Aventine. At least that's a reassuring voice to hear at a time like this. How? Emma? What's wrong? The, the woman talking on the radio, she's... You all know her? Who, Misty? Of course. She hosts the radio show Aventine every Sunday night at 9. I've seen her out and about in Trista, too. She always looks so fashionable. Though, considering Oppentime is broadcast by Radio Trista, it makes sense that's where she'd be. Huh? Do you know her or something? The Chancellor's standing at the podium, and it looks like he's about ready to begin. Let's hear what he has to say. Citizens of Heimdall, fellow countrymen, Erebonians far and wide, I thank you for your attention. I am Gileath Osborne, your Chancellor and the acting representative of the Imperial Government. We stand today in the face of an uncertain future. All of you, I'm sure, are aware of what has fired in recent weeks. Crossbell, our erstwhile province, has defiantly declared its independence and, as its parting shot, frozen the assets entrusted to them by the hard-working and women of Erebonia. As we have moved to safeguard our national interests, Armed conflicts have broken out on our borders. Our enemies point to this as an example of Erebonian aggression. But nothing, 
could be further from the truth. We acted in accordance with our duties as a colonial power. All we have done, we have done as is our sovereign right. The Imperial Hand may be firm, but it is fair. These traitors, however, have shown the world that they are neither. With an unknown weapon of mass destruction, they have annihilated Gorelia Fortress, the stronghold that has long protected the very gates of this country. I ask you, brothers and sisters of the Empire, do we allow such an odious act to go unpunished? Do we sit idle as the pride and dignity of our great nation is spat upon and trampled underfoot? We cannot. We must not. And we will not. With blood and with iron, we shall meet out justice. Listen to him go. Oh, he's quite the orator, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, he's certainly not out to upend my expectations. Liam? What are you doing? Hmm. Nope, can't get through. No spare, I guess. Who are you trying to call? What is all this about? Oh, it's part of my mission. The most important part, actually. If only I'd caught on a little sooner. But considering he managed to outwit Claire, Lecter, and even Gramps, I suppose Crow's earned this victory. What? What does Crow have to do with this? Huh. So that's your angle. You came because you had a potential lead on C, and you couldn't look into it from the outside. Is that it? What? As in the leader of the Imperial Liberation Front? But he's dead, isn't he? The Intelligence Division looked at all of C's actions so far and drew up a list of potential suspects. And one possibility we couldn't dismiss was that he had ties to this academy somehow. But after C and his cronies got blown up aboard their airship in the mine, we thought it was a moot point. Looks like we spoke too soon, though. Oh, I can't believe how bad we screwed this up. Uh, are you seriously suggesting that it's Crow? That it's been him all along? Crow was with us in the mine right up until he went with the miners to escort them back to the surface, right? Yeah, and then his route back ended up blocked off by a cave-in, so he wasn't able to reach us until later. B but what if he actually used another route to get there ahead of us? Then fought us wearing that masked helmet and cape. Before making it look like he boarded the airship, then sneaking back around to join the others like nothing happened. Madness. No one would stake their entire plan on such a precarious stunt. Perhaps we can read the evidence that way, but there are a few leaps in logic that bother me. Besides, remember when the terrorists escaped from Gorelia Fortress? We heard C talking to us, and not just then. He was addressing us just before the airship exploded in the mine, too. That's true, in both counts. And Crow was with us the whole time during everything that went down in Gorelia. He never left our sight. Right. No mistaking it. My name is C, leader of the Imperial Liberation Front. The hammer of judgment shall fall again. I'm ready. Are you? Yeah, there's no way he could be... He could have recorded a message in advance and played it back. Oh. And the airship that exploded? It could have been controlled remotely. His alibi seems airtight. But once you account for things like that, it starts looking pretty questionable. Yep. And if C's still alive, that means the other ringleaders probably are too. Then right now, Crow is... Oh no. He said he was headed to Dreykel's Plaza, didn't he? If a skilled sniper has their eye on you, you let your guard down for even a second and bang, you're dead. If he's the one who shot down the airship in the mine, then it's checkmate for the Chancellor. Crow's already won. We stand at the brink of nothing less than a national crisis. In such tumultuous times, we must set aside our differences. We must look past the ideologies that divide us. 
I will not deny the rift that has grown between the reformist and noble factions, especially in recent times. But how childish, how insignificant such squabbles seem when the enemy marshals its strength beyond our borders. I have met with His Majesty the Emperor and have secured permission to embark on the course we now must. Thus, in the name of the Emperor and as the representative of the Imperial Government, I hereby proclaim Finish your speech in hell. Well, that was anticlimactic. And there's our coup de gras. Now, just have to add the finishing touches. Hands in the air! It really was you all along, to think. All the time we spent searching for the leader of the Imperial Liberation Front, and he was right under our noses. Crow Armbrust, from the Jirai SEZ. Aww, and here I thought I'd managed to cover my tracks like a real pro. So, who put all the pieces together? I bet it was Arundel, wasn't it? We just received confirmation a short while ago. If you hadn't been so difficult to pin down, we would have had this investigation finished up already. How could you? How could you? You know, this really brings back the memories. It's a lot like when Jirai was annexed by the Empire eight years ago. You let your guard down, you lose. That's how your boss's favorite little game works, isn't it? Well, he lost. And now he won't be playing any of his games again. Ever. You! Get on the ground! I don't know how you managed to plan all of this, but you'll tell us eventually. I'll see to that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. What? <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, we've just witnessed a shocking turn of events. Chancellor Osborne has been shot by an unknown assailant. He's currently being rushed into urgent care. We'll bring you more on the situation as it develops. Oh, what is that? It's coming closer. It looks like we may not be out of the woods yet, folks. A large silver craft has been sighted in the sky to the south, and it seems to be headed toward the capital. But hearing a radio broadcast just isn't the same as seeing it unfold yourselves, is it? So how about I give you Thor students a special treat? Just my way of saying thanks for the fun I had at the festival. Wait, what's she talking about? Was... was she speaking directly to us just now? Resound, resound, O oh voice everlasting! Rend night's silent veil and reveal unto all the beautiful world! What the? Isn't that the plaza in Heimdall? This is one of the Azure Abyss's incantations! Phantasmagoria!
know, but it ain't one of ours. It's time to avenge His Excellency. What are those things? Humanoid combat armors, courtesy of Reinford's 5th Development Division, staunch supporters of the Noble Alliance. Knights for the modern age, modeled after a stunning historical example and made of hardened steel from toe to crown. We call them the Panzer Soldats. But how did... Don't move! <laughs> Sorry, I don't take orders from you. Zephyr should be able to secure Valflame Palace just fine on their own. But I've got my own score to settle. No! What? <laughs> See ya, Icy Maiden. was a bit of a letdown, huh? I'll give him an A for effort. But we're talking about the Imperial Capital here? <laughs> Is that the best they could muster on their home turf? The hard part's still ahead. Most of the Imperial Army's putting out fires across the country. But they'll be back soon enough now. And who knows? They might have some anti-Soldats countermeasures up their sleeve. <laughs> hey, anything can happen. Guess the ones to watch out for are the 3rd, 4th, and 7th Armored Divisions, huh? I wonder whose side our little princess will take. That's for Fee to decide. The boss would have wanted it. Splendidly done, Grianos. I see you were able to share the sweetest notes of my aria with our little friends. I find myself reminded afresh of the brilliance with which you shine as the second anguis, Lady Vida Clotilde. Vast is the stage, and beauty is the performance of the Azure Abyss. <laughs> That's quite the compliment, considering your standards on beauty. Still, first the Burl, then Crossbell, and now here in Erebonia. Don't you think you're getting a little too greedy for your own good? Oh, your chastisement cuts deep. We'll be proceeding with the next step of the Phantasmal Blaze plan, I presume? Hmm, yes indeed. The bells are tolling for Crossbell, and preparations here are complete. Still, even this grand an undertaking is but a jewel in a greater crown. The second stage of the Orpheus final plan. The symphony awaits us. Let the second movement commence. <laughs> 